ladies and gentlemen, we proceed. Sorry for the interruption, but I think we are good to go. So I'll go straight into the question. Part A, indicated power. Also known as the IP. So, a brief explanation. What exactly do we mean by indicated power? Okay? Indicated power is simply the theoretical power that when you get a testing machine to find how much power the engine will be able to generate, that is the indicated power. So, this is a very common question. More often than ever, they'll ask you to find the indicated power, which is found by The formula for indicated power is given as follows. IP for indicated power is equal to Planck Planck over 120. or over A. Now, what do these letters mean? P is for indicated mini effective pressure. The mean effective pressure. These three, the line, there is L for length of the stroke, L the area of a piston, and N is the number of who N is our number of revolutions. And the K is the number of cylinders. Okay? So in this case, our mean effective pressure was given as 775 times 10 to the power 3 Newton per meter squared this value we have. And the length of the stroke was given as 1,250 millimeters, which is 1.25 meters. This is a very big engine. It's a marine engine. It should be for a, for a ship. And the area of a cylinder, we know the piston diameter is 16. So our area will be pi over 4 multiplied by 0 0.61 squared. Why is 0 0.61? We are dividing by 1,000. So that we work in what? Meters. Okay? So we have V shift. We get our pi. Pi multiplied by 0 0.61 squared. Divided by 4. Our area is 0 0.2922 meter squared. Okay? And our K, number of cylinders was given as what? Six. So, ladies and gentlemen, those are the parameters 
that you need to know in order for you to find the indicated the power. Just know it as the prank over 120. Why 120? This 120 can be written as 2 by what? 60. Why 60? In this question, because we are told that there are two revs. Uh, I mean, uh, what is happening here? The values have been given as per hour. And the speed is two revs per minute. So, that's where we are using the sequence because that's 60 minutes in one hour. We proceed in putting on these values. So, our IP will be calculated as the So IP plank over 2 by 60. So we have 7, 7, 5, 10, 10, 10, 10, 3, multiply by the length, 1.25, multiply by the area, we got our area as 0 0.2922, multiply by N, we had Two rubs per second, meaning in one hour is 120. Multiply by six, everything over two by sixty. We do the patches over there. One million six hundred and ninety-eight four hundred and twelve point five watts, which is one one thousand six hundred and ninety-eight kilo watts. That's the indicated the power that will come from this engine okay we proceed the next one we are asked to find is the brake power the brake power okay B brake power known as the BP, which is the if we are to grab this engine and stop it, how much power is required to do that? Okay, so the brake power is given by BP is given by 2 by any T over 60. How? Okay? Power is always power is equal to torque multiplied by omega. So we have the torque here 
and the two by n over c is simply the omega. The omega, that's the two by n over c is the omega. So in this question, what is our n? We were told that the speed is two revs per second, meaning that if we have two revs in e, uh, two revs. Per second, meaning that per minute is how many revs? If there are two revs in one second, in 60 seconds there will be how many revs? Okay? So our x is 2 times 60. So our n is what? 120. Okay? So in these calculations, the speed D should always be in e RPM. Okay? In this question, they gave us speed D as e, 2 revs per second. So, we always convert these 2 revs per second into revs per minute. So, if in one second there are 2 revs, in 60 seconds there will be how many revs? It will be 2 times 60, which is e, 120 revs per second. So, to proceed, we have 2 multiplied by pi, multiplied by 120, multiplied by the torque, which was given as the 108 kilo newtons. 108 times 10 to the power 3 over 60. Okay? Then, we can do the parties over here. We are getting 1,357,000 168, which is simply 1,357 kilowatts. That is our BP, the brake power. So, brake power 2 by NT over 60. Indicated power blank over 120 blank over 120 or over 2 by 60 where why is it that here is over 60 and here is over 2 by 60 it's because this is a four stroke engine so in a four stroke engine in every Four cycles. In, in one revolution, in a four stroke engine, it means we have got two power strokes. That's where the two comes from. If it's a four stroke engine, if it is a two stroke engine, we put one here. Okay? We proceed. Next part of the question. Part C. Mr. Grigori, somebody is asking that he can't see anything. Think he advised him to see the people who know how to make the phones see. Energy supplied by the fuel in one hour. Energy supplied by the fuel in one hour. Energy supplied, ladies and gentlemen, will be given by the mass 
consumed the mass rate of fuel multiplied by its calorific value. Excuse me, sir. Yes, yes. Uh, on C, is it not supposed to be uh, the percentage of energy supplied to the kg of fuel lost to the cooking water? What? Uh, let me just check. But see, the percentage of the energy supplied to the kg of fuel lost due to the cooling water yes oh okay i see but in order for us to get that we first have to get the energy supplied per kg okay. Okay. yes so what is the energy supplied per kg then we shall find the energy absorbed by the water then we shall do the comparison Okay, thank you. Can we proceed? Okay, so... So we can proceed. <laughs> the energy supplied in one hour, how many kgs are consumed in one hour according to the question? Give me the value. The MFO. What did you say is the MF there? The mass, the, the mass, the, the mass flow rate, the mass of the energy, the mass of the fuel. M with a dot is mass flow rate. F for fuel. So this is the mass flow rate of fuel. So how much fuel is consumed in one hour? In cages? Uh... It's uh, 19,200 kgs per hour. Ah, oh, no, that's the amount of cooling water, yeah. <laughs> we need the amount of kgs, the mass of the fuel in kgs per hour. I think it is there. Okay. It's uh, 340 yeah, kg. 340 kg of fuel. 340, thank you. Per hour. Yes. Good. So if it was 340 in two hours, we are going to say over two. But since it is per hour, it's over one, which is the same as 340. And what is the calorific value of that fuel? The calorific value of the fuel? 44,200. 44,200 kilo juice per kg. Is that so? So, we punch this over here. We are getting 15, 0 to 8. So I have 15 million, 28,000 kilojoules per kg per hour. That's the amount of energy supplied in one hour. What is the amount of energy absorbed by the water? Okay. Energy absorbed by the water. What is the formula? This is energy supplied by the fuel. Now, energy absorbed by the water. We use the same formula for engineering stars. Mass multiplied by specific heat capacity multiplied by the temperature change in the water. 
What is the mass of the water? Was it given the mass of the water in one hour? It was given. Uh, it's 19,200 kg. 19,200. Specific heat capacity for water, 4.8 kilojoules. Temperature change of the water from 15 to 63. 63 minus 15. Punch diesel. What are you getting? Hello? Hello, what's up? You need a pill, huh? Uh huh. Uh, four, four, two, three. Six eight zero four four two three six eight zero. Remember, water yes. is four thousand. What's the specific capacity for water? Is it four point eight specific heat capacity for water? Or oh, it's 4.20. It's 4186, eh? Or 4200. Or 4200. Huh? Yeah. So I suppose it's 4.2 here, not 4.8. So I suppose The specific heat capacity for water is not given. The assumption is that you know it by heart. So when you use that, you get three eight seven zero seven twenty kilojoules. Per kg. That's the amount of energy lost in one hour. Okay? So now, the question asked us to find the, the percentage of the energy supplied of fuel lost to the cooling water. So we now know the energy lost the cooling water and the energy supplied from the fuel. So to find the percentage of the energy lost to the cooling water, we are going to say, now we shall say, energy lost to cooling water. Okay? 
that will be 3870720 over 15.028.00 multiplied by what? 100. So, is the energy lost to the water over the energy supplied. Okay? So, we do the parties over there. We are getting 25.8%. That is the percentage of the energy lost to the water. So how to get that? You find the energy supplied, then find the energy loss. Then energy loss over energy supply times 100, you get your 25.80 percent. Okay, we proceed. The break thermal efficiency. The break thermal efficiency. Okay. The break thermal efficiency. Okay, so break thermal efficiency is given by break thermal efficiency is given by break power over the mass flow rate multiplied by the calorific value. Okay. So, what was our break power? Our break power was the 1357. Okay. Multiply by 10 to the power 3. Over. The mass flow rate. Okay. Multiplied by the calorific value. So, the mass flow rate for the fuel was what? 340. Per hour. Now this must be changed to per second. So it will be 60 by 60. Why? Because brake power is in kilowatts. Kilowatts is simply joules per second. So when we are doing it with joules per second, the mass flow rate has been given as 140 kgs per hour. So we must find these per second. So it's 340 divided by 60 minutes, multiplied by 60 seconds. Multiply by the calorific value, which is given as what? 44. What was the calorific value of our fuel? 44. 44 what? 200. 44,000. 200 times 10 to the power 3. Okay? So, this power 3 and this power 3, they can go. And remember, this is efficiency, so we need to multiply by 
velocity for value. So what we have here, we have 1357 multiplied by, okay, over, multiplied by 67 by 67 over 340 multiplied by 44, 200. This is the case by the case can get here on top. Those are simply laws of algebra. We do the pastizo. Fifty two point five per cent. That's the break femoral efficiency. Okay. We proceed. Now we are asked to find the break mean effective pressure. Break mean effective pressure. Ah, this pressure was heavy. But in the exam, they might just ask you about the three or four of those. But there are some of the various examiners, they can ask everything. Break me We were given the indicated mean effective pressure. Now we are asked to find the break mean effective pressure. Okay? P BM, brake mean effective pressure, is given by the brake power over land, over two land, okay? So our brake power, one, three, five, seven, There are two of them because it's the first row. Multiply by 67. Two. Two rems per second. That's why I have two times 67. Multiply by the number of strokes, which is four. Okay. Over line. Which is two times the length, one point two five zero times the area. What was our area? What was our area? Okay, let me do this. Let me calculate this for part. Let me not complicate things. Our BP is one three five seven. Okay. Over line one point two five zero times pi over four times zero point six one squared and all that's our formula. What do we get there? Okay.
The what? The what? N. N. The speed. Ah, okay. Okay, thank you. Multiplied by N. Good. What wins? Correct. Thank you so much. Give us seven seventy three point eight. Why kilo? Because this value was in kilo. Okay. Mechanical efficiency. Mechanical efficiency. Very simple. BP over IP times hundred. That's all. 1357.1 over what was our IP? 169. 1698.683. Multiply by 100. I'm running out of time. 79.9%. That's the mechanical.